It will among men, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Lord, where they multiplied that afflict me, many rise up against me, many say of my soul, There is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my help, for my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain, and laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save you, O my God. For thou hast smitten all who thou cast from an enemy, as thou hast broken the teeth of sinners. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are struck fast in me, and thou hast pressed thine hand heavily upon me. For there is no health in my flesh in the face of thy wrath. There is no peace in my bones in the face of my sins. For mine iniquities have gone over my head. They have weighed upon me like a heavy burden. My wounds dank and festered in the face of my foolishness. I was wretched and bowed down unto the end. I went mourning all the day long, for my loins are filled with insults, and there is no health in my flesh. I am afflicted and greatly humbled. I have heard from the groaning of my heart. Lord, all my desires before thee, and my groaning is not hidden from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength has failed me, and the light of mine eyes itself is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew near and stood before me, and my nearest of kin stood afar off, and they that sought my soul took to violence, and they that sought evils for me spoke empty things, and devised deceits all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, heard not, and was as a speechless man, not opening his mouth, and I became as a man that heareth not, and his mouth has no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, of I hope, thou wilt hear, O Lord my God, for I said that mine enemies never rejoice over me, for when my feet were shaken, they spoke boastful words against me, for I am ready for scourges, and my grief is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity and be sorry for my sin, but mine enemies live and are stronger than I. And they that hate me unjustly are multiplied, they that reward evil for good have slandered me. Because I pursue goodness, forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Attend unto my help, O Lord of my salvation, forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Attend unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, I keep watch for thee at dawn, my soul is thirsted for thee. How often in my flesh long for thee in a barren and trackless and waterless land. So have, I, so have I appeared before thee in the sanctuary to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. Let my soul be filled with marrow and fat, my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. If I remember thee upon my bed, I dawn and meditate on thee. For thou hast been my help, but in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath given unto thee, thy right hand hath upheld me, but they sought after my soul in vain. They shall go into the lowest parts of the earth, they shall be delivered up into the edge of the sword, they shall be portions for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God, every one that swears by him shall be praised. For the mouth of them that speak unjust things is stopped, and dawn and meditate on thee. For thou hast been my helper, and in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath given unto thee, unto thee thy right hand hath upheld me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, with now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. И ныне и пресны во веки веков. Аминь. Господи, Боже, спасение моего в одни возлаха в нощи пред Тобою. Да внинет прица молитва моя, преклони ухо Твое к молению моему. Яко исполнится зол душа моя, и живот мой аду приближися. Привменен бы с нисходящими в ров, быв яко человек, помощи в мертвых свободе. Яко я, звене, спящие во гробе, их же не помянулось и к тому. Идти от руки Твоей от реновини быша, положишь имя в рове преисподнем. И в темных и сене смертней на мне утвердися ярость Твоя, вся волны Твоя навилась и намял. Удавил из знаемых моих от меня, положившими мерзость себе, предан бых и не схождах, очи мои из него гости от нищеты. Возвах Тебе, Господи, весь день возьмите Тебе рутцы мои, еда мертвым творишь и чудеса, ли врачи воскресят и исповедятся Тебе. Еда повесть Твою в гробе милость Твою и истину в Твою в погибели. Еда познана будет во тьме чудеса Твоя и правда Твоя земли забвений. И аз Тебе, Господи, возвах и утро молитва моя притворится. Скую, Господи, отрежьши душу мою, отвращаешь лице Твое от меня. Не исчезнь аз и в трудях от юности моя. Снежися, смирися и изнемогу, на мне при душе гневе твое устрашение твое возмутишь мя, а бы душу мя ко вода весь день одержаш мя в купе, удалил есть от меня друга и искреннего и знаемых моих от страстей. Господи Боже, спасение мое во дни возвах и ночи при тобою, да внидет при тебе молитва моя, преклони ухо твое к молению моему. Благослови душу мою, Господа, и все внутреннее мое имя святое Его. Благослови душу мою, Господа, и не забывай всех воздаяний Его. 
очищающего себе закония Твоя, исцеляющего себе недуги Твоя, избавляющего от исцеления живот Твоя, венчающего Тебе милостью и щедротами, исполняющего в благих желания Твоя, обновиться яко орля и юность Твоя, творя милости не Господи Своему всем обидимым, сказав пути Своему Моисеевым и сыновым Израилевым, хотение Своя, щедр и милости в Господь, долго терпелив и много милости. Не до конца прогневается, не живе враждует, не по беззаконию нашим сотворилась нам, не же по грехом нашим воздал есть нам. Яко по высоте небес не от земли утвердил есть Господь милость свою на боящихся Его. Елика стоят востоцы от запад, ударил есть от нас беззаконие наше, яко же щедрит отец сына, ущедри Господь боящийся Его, яко той позна создание наше, помяну и копец есть мы. Человек, яко трава дни его, яко цвет сильный, так от цвете, яко дух против нем и не будет, и не познает тому место своего. Милость же Господня от века и до века на боящихся Его, и правда Его на сынях сынов, хранящих завет Его, и помнящих заповеди Его творите я. Господь на небесе уготово престол свой, и царство Его всеми обладает. Благословите Господа все ангели Его, сильные крепостью творящие слово Его, услышите глаз словес Его, благословите себя. Благословите Господа все силы Его и слуги Его, творящие волю Его. Благословите Господа вся дела Его, на всяком месте владычестве Его. Благослови душа моя Господа, на всяком месте владычества Его. Благослови душа моя Господа. Господи, услыши молитву мою, внуши моление мое во истине Твоей. Услыши меня в правде Твоей и не внедит с рабом Твоим. Яко не оправдится пред Тобой всяк живый. Яко погнав в душу мою, смирил я землю, живот мой. Посадил меня из темных мертв, темных яко мертвые века, и ныва мне дух мой, во мне смитесь и сердце мое, поминут мне древние, получись во всех делях твоих, то ли руку твою получался, воздев тебе руцы мои, душа моя, яко земля безводная тебе. Скоро услышим я, Господи, исчезе дух мой, не тройте лица твоего от меня, и уподоблюсь нисходящий в рог. Слышано, сотвори мне за утро милость твою, яко на тебя уповах. Скажи мне, Господи, путь вон же пойду, я как тебе взял душу мою. Изми меня от враг мою, Господи, к тебе прибегу, к научи меня творить и волю твою, яко ты си Бог мой. Дух твой благий наставит меня на землю праву. Имени твоего ради, Господи, живишь и меня оправдай твоей, изведешь и от печали душу мою. И милостью твоей потребишь враги мои, и погубишь и вся стужающая души моей, яко азрак твоей есть. Услыши меня, Господи, в правде твоей, и не внизу с рабом твоей. Услыши меня, Господи, в правде Твоей, и не вниди в суд с рабом Твоим. Дух Твой благий наставит меня на землю праву. Слава Отцу и Сыну и Святому Духу, и ныне и присно, и во веки веков. Аминь. Аллилуйя, 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 слава Тебе, Боже. Аллилуйя, 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 слава Тебе, Боже. Аллилуйя, 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 слава Тебе, Боже.
so renowned for his spiritual life that many came to him from neighboring monasteries, and some even from afar. While doing all this, he never ceased to study the divine scriptures, whether resting, standing, working, or eating food, the distracts he never called him. He incessantly and constantly had a single aim, always to sing of God and to practice the teaching of the divine scripture. Zosimus used to relate how, as soon as he was taken from his mother's breast, he was handed over to the monastery, where he went to his training as an ascetic, till he reached the age of 53. After that, he began to be tormented with the thought that he was perfect in everything and needed no instruction from anyone, saying to himself mentally, is there a monk on earth who can be of use to me and show me the kind of asceticism that I have not accomplished? Is there a man to be found in the desert who has surpassed me? Thus thought the elder when suddenly an angel appeared to him and said, Zosimus, valiantly have you struggled as far as this is within the power of man. Valiantly have you gone to the ascetic course, but there is no man who has attained perfection. Before you lie, unknown struggles greater than those you have accomplished, that you may know how many other ways lead to salvation. Leave your native land of the renowned patriarch Abraham and go to the monastery by the river Jordan. Zosimus did as he was told. He left the monastery in which he had lived from childhood and went to the river Jordan. At last, he reached the community to which God had sent him. Having knocked at the door of the monastery, he told the monk who was the porter who he was, and the porter told the abbot. On being admitted to the abbot's presence, Zosimus made the usual monastic prostration and prayer. Seeing that he was a monk, the abbot asked, Where do you come from, brother? And why have you come to us poor old men? Zosimus replied, there is no need to speak about where I have come from, but I have come, Father, seeking spiritual profit. For I have heard great things about your skill in leading souls to God. Brethren, the abbot said to him, only God can heal the infirmity of the soul. May he teach you and us his divine ways and guidance. But as it is the love of Christ that hath moved you, visit us, poor old men, then stay with us, if that is why you have come. May the good shepherd who laid out his life for our salvation fill us all with the grace of the Holy Spirit. After this, Zosimus bowed to the abbot, asked for his prayers and blessings, and stayed in the monastery. There he saw elders proficient, both in action and the contemplation of God laid in spirit, working for the Lord. They sang incessantly. They stood in prayer all night. Work was ever in their hands and songs on their lips. Never an idle word was heard among them. They knew nothing about acquiring temporal goods or of the cares of life, but they had one desire, to, to become a body of horses. Their constant food was the word of God, and they sustained their bodies on bread and water, as much as their love for God allowed them. Seeing this, Zosimus was greatly edified and prepared for the struggle that lay before him. Many days have passed, and the time drew near when all Christians fast and prepare themselves to worship the divine passion and resurrection of Christ. The monastery grid gates were kept always locked and only opened when one of the community was sent out on some errand. It was a desert place, not only unvisited by people of the world, but even unknown to them. There was a rule in the monastery which was the reason why God brought Zosimus there. At the beginning of the great fast, the priests celebrated the holy liturgy and all partook of the holy body and blood of Christ. After the liturgy, they went to the refectory and would eat a little Lenten food. Then all gathered in church, 
asked for forgiveness, and each made a prostration to the Abbot, and asked his blessings and prayers <coughs> for the struggle that lay before them. After this, the gates of the monastery were thrown open and singing, The Lord is my life and my Savior, whom shall I do? The Lord is the defender of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And the rest of that psalm all went out into the desert and crossed the river Jordan. Only one or two brothers were left in the monastery, not to guard the property, for there was nothing to rob, but so as to so as not to leave the church without divine service. Each took with him as much as he could or wanted in the way of food, according to the needs of his body. One would take a little bread, another some figs, another dates, or wheat soaked in water. And some took nothing but their own body, covered with rags, and fed from nature forced them to it on the plants that grew in the desert. After crossing the Jordan, they all scattered far and wide in different directions. And this was the rule of life they had, and which they all observed, neither to talk to one another, nor to know how each one lived and fasted. If they did happen to catch sight of one another, they went to another part of the country, living alone and always singing to God, and at a definite time, eating a very small quantity of food. In this way they spent the whole of the fast and used to return to the monastery a week before the resurrection of Christ on Palm Sunday. Each one returned having his own conscience as the witness of his labor. And no one asked another how he had spent his time in the desert. Such were the rules of the monastery. Every one of them, while in the desert, struggled with himself before the judge of the struggle, God, not seeking to please men and fast before the eyes of all. For what is done for the sake of men, to win praise and honor, is not only useless to the one who does it, but sometimes the cause of great punishment. Zosimus did the same as all, and he went far far into the desert with the secret hope of finding some father who might be living there and who might be able to satisfy his thirst and longing. And he wandered on tireless, as if hurrying on to some definite place. He had already walked for twenty days, and when the sixth hour came, he stopped, and turning to the east, he began to sing the sixth hour. and recite the customary prayers. He used to break his journey plus at fixed hours of the day to rest a little, to chant psalms, standing, and to pray on the bent knees. And as he sang thus without turning his eyes from the heavens, he suddenly saw to the right of the pillow on which he stood the semblance of a human body. At first he was confused, thinking he beheld a vision of the devil, and even started with fear. But having guarded himself with the sign of the cross, and banished all fear, he turned his gaze in that direction, and in truth saw some form gliding southwards. It was naked, the skin dark, as it burns up by the heat of the sun. The hair on his head was white as and not long, falling just below his neck. Zosimus was so overjoyed at beholding a human form that he ran after it in pursuit, but the form fled from him. He followed at length when he was near enough to be heard and shouted, Why do you run from an old man and a sinner, slave of the true God? Wait for me, whoever you are, in God's name I tell you, for the love of God, for whose sake you are living in this desert. Forgive me, for God's sake, but I cannot turn towards you and show you my face, Abba Zosimus. For I am a woman, and naked, as you see, with the uncovered shame of my God. But if you would like to fulfill one wish of a sinful woman, throw me your cloak so that I can cover my body and can turn to you and ask for your blessing. Here, terror seized Zosimus, for he heard that 
that she called him by name. But he realized that she could not have done so without knowing anything of him if she had not done, if she had not had the power of spiritual insight. He at once did as he was asked. He took off his old tattered cloak and threw it to her, turning away as he did so. She picked it up and was able to cover at least a part of her body. Then she turned to Zosimus and said, Why do you wish, Abba Zosimus, to see a simple woman? What do you wish to hear or learn from you? You who have not shrunk from such great struggles. Zosimus threw himself on the ground and asked for her blessing. She likewise bowed down before him, and thus they lay on the ground, prostrate, asking for each other's blessing. And one word alone could be heard from both. Bless me. After a long while, the woman said to Zosimus, Abba Zosimus, it is you who must give the blessing and pray. You are dignified by the order of the priesthood, and for many years you have been standing before the holy altar and offering the sacrifice of the divine mysteries. This flung Zosimus into even greater terror. At length, with tears, he said unto her, O mother, filled with the Spirit, by your mode of life it is evident that you live with God and have died to the world. The grace granted to you is apparent, for you have called me by name and recognized that I am a priest, though you have never seen me before. Grace is recognized not by one's orders, but by gifts of the Spirit. So give me your blessing for God's sake, for I need your prayers. Then giving away before the wish of the elder, the woman said, Blessed is God who cares for the salvation of men and their souls. Those of us answered, Amen. And both rose to their feet. Then the woman asked the elder, Why have you come, man of God, to me when so simple? Why do you wish to see a woman naked and devoid of every virtue? Though I know one thing, the grace of the Holy Spirit has brought you to render me a service in time. Tell me, Father, how are the Christian people living? And the kings, how is the church guided? Zosima said, By your holy prayers, Mother, Christ has granted lasting peace unto all, but fulfilled the unworthy petition of an old man, and pray for the whole world, and for me, who am a sinner, so that my wanderings in the desert may not be fruitless. She answered, You who are a priest, Abba Zosimus, it is you who must pray for me, and for all, for this is your calling. But as we must all be obedient, I will gladly do what you ask. And with these words, she turned to the east, and raising her eyes to heaven, and stretching out her hands, she began to pray in a whisper. One could not hear separate words, so that Zosimus could not understand anything that she said in her prayers. Meanwhile, he stood, according to his own word, all in a flutter, looking at the ground without saying a word. And he swore, calling God to witness, that when at length he thought that her prayer was very long, he took his eyes off the ground and saw that she was raised about a four arms distance from the ground and stood praying in the air. When he saw this, even greater terror seized him and he fell on the ground weeping and repeating many times, Lord have mercy. And while lying prostrate on the ground, he was tempted by a thought. Is it not a spirit, and perhaps her prayer is hypocrisy? But at the very same moment, the woman turned round, raised the elder from the ground, and said, Why do thoughts confuse you, Abba, and tempt you about me, as if I were a spirit, and dissembled in prayer? No, O Holy Father, that I am only a simple woman, though I am guarded by holy baptism. And I am no spirit, but earth, and ashes, and flesh alone. And with these words, she guarded herself with the sign of the cross on her forehead, eyes, mouth, and breast, saying, May God defend us from the evil one, and from his designs for 
fierce is his struggle against us. Hearing and seeing this, the elder fell to the ground, and embracing her feet, he said with tears, I beg you, by the name of Christ our God, who was born of the Virgin, for whose sake you have stripped yourself, for whose sake you have exhausted your flesh, do not hide from your slave who you are, and whence, and how you came into this desert. Tell me everything, so that the marvelous works of God may become known. A hidden wisdom and a secret treasure, what profit is there in them? Tell me all, I implore you, for not out of vanity or for self-display will you speak, but to reveal the truth to me, an unworthy sinner. I believe in God, for whom you live and whom you serve. I believe that he led me into this desert so as to show me his ways in regard to you. It is not in our power to resist the plans of God. If it were not the will of God that you and your life should be known, he would not have allowed me to see you and would not have strengthened me to undertake this journey. One like me who never before dared to leave his cell. Much more said Abba Zosimus, but the woman raised him and said, I am ashamed, Abba, to speak to you of my disgraced life. Forgive me, for God's sake, but as you have already seen my naked body, I shall likewise lay before you my work, so that you may know with what shame and obscenity my soul is filled. I was not running away out of vanity as you thought. For what have I to be proud of? I who was the chosen vessel of the devil? But when I start my story, you will run from me as from a snake. For your ears will not be able to bear the vileness of my actions. But I shall tell you all without hiding anything, only imploring you, first of all, to pray incessantly that I may find mercy on the day of judgment. Through the prayers of Holy Mother Mary, of Egypt, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen.
showing me that seems to be sweet, but making me taste and swallow bitterness. Have mercy on me, Lord God, have mercy on me. And then what right to be banished from Eden, O Savior, because he disobeyed one of thy commandments? What then shall I suffer for constantly rejecting thy words of life? I have passed my entire life. 
Christ, O bind from Father, run quickly out to meet me, and say, with your knees. I go down for thee, O Jesus, for I have sinned against thee. Be merciful to me, take away from me the heavy burden of sin, and in thy compassion grant me tears of
here I speak the pure truth. Often when they wish to pay me, I refuse the money. I acted in this way so as to make as many men as possible try to attain me, doing free of charge what gave me pleasure. Do not think that I was rich, and that was the reason why I did not take the money. I lived by begging, often by spinning flax. But I have an insatiable desire and an irrepressible passion for lying in filth. This was life to me. Every kind of abuse of nature I regarded as love. That is how I lived. Then one summer, I saw a large crowd of Libyans and Egyptians running towards the sea. I asked one of them, where are these men hurrying to? He replied, they are all going to Jerusalem for the exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross, which takes place in a few days. I said to him, will they take me with them if I wish to go? No one will hinder you if you have money to pay for the journey and for food. And I said to him, to tell you the truth, I have no money, neither have I food. But I shall go with them, and they shall and shall go aboard, and they shall feed me, whether they want or not. I have a body. They shall take it instead of pay for the journey. I was suddenly filled with the desire to go, Abba, to have more lovers to satisfy my passion. I told you, Abba Zosimus, not to force me to tell you of my disgrace. God is my witness. I am afraid of defiling you and the very air with my words. Zosimus, we replied to her, Speak on for God's sake, mother. Speak, and do not break the thread of such an edifying tale. And resuming her story, she went on. That youth, on hearing my shameless words, laughed and went off, while I, throwing away my spinning wheel, ran up towards the sea, in the direction which everyone seemed to be taking. And seeing some young men standing on the shore, about ten or more of them, full of vigor and alert in their movements, I decided that they would do for my purpose. It seemed that some of them were waiting for more travelers, while others had gone ashore. Shamelessly, as usual, I mixed with the crowd, saying, Take me with you to the place you are going to. You will not find me superfluous. I also added a few more words calling forth general laughter. Seeing my readiness to be shameless, they readily took me aboard the boat. Those who were expected came also, and we set sail at once. How shall I relate to you what happened after this? Whose tongue can tell? Whose ears can take in all that took place on that boat during that voyage? And to all this I frequently forced those miserable youths even against their own will. There is no mentionable or unmentionable depravity of which I was not their teacher. I am amazed, Abba, how the sea stood our licentiousness, how the earth did not open its jaws, and how it was that hell did not swallow me alive. When I had engulfed in my neck so many souls, but I think God was seeking my repentance, for he does not desire the death of a sinner, but magnanimously awaits his return to him. At last, we arrived in Jerusalem. I spent the days before the festival in the town, living the same kind of life, perhaps even worse. I was not content with the youths I had seduced at sea, and who had helped me to get to Jerusalem. Many others, citizens of the town and foreigners, I also seduced. The holy day of the exaltation of the cross dawned, while I was still flying about, hunting for youths. At daybreak, I saw that everyone was hurrying to the church, so I ran to the rest. When the hour for the holy elevation approached, I was trying to make my way in with the crowd, 
which was struggling to get through the church doors. I had at last squeezed through with great difficulty, almost to the entrance of the temple, from which the life-giving tree of the cross was being shown to the people. But when I trod on the doorsteps, which everyone passed, I was stopped by some force which prevented my entering. Meanwhile, I was brushed aside by the crowd and found myself standing alone in the porch. Thinking that this had happened because of my woman's weakness, I again began to work my way into the crowd, trying to elbow myself forward, but in vain I struggled. Again, my feet trod on the doorsteps over which others were entering the church without encountering any obstacles. I alone seemed to remain unaccepted by the church. It was as if there was a detachment of soldiers <coughs> standing there to oppose my entrance. Once again, I was excluded by the same mighty force, and again I stood in the porch. Having repeated my attempt three or four times, at last I felt exhausted and had no more strength to push and to be pushed. So I went aside and stood in the corner of the porch. And only then, with great difficulty, it began to dawn on me, and I began to understand the reason why I was prevented from being admitted to see the life-giving cross. The word of salvation gently touched the eyes of my heart, and revealed to me that it was my unclean life which barred the entrance to me. I began to weep and lament and beat my, my breast and to sigh from the depths of my heart. And so I stood weeping when I saw above me the icon of the Most Holy Mother of God and turning to her with my bodily and spiritual eyes, I said, O Lady Mother of God, who gave birth in the flesh to God the Word, I know, oh how well I know, that it is no honor or praise to thee when one so impure and depraved as I looks up to thine icon, or ever virgin, who didst keep thy body and thy soul in purity. Rightly do I inspire hatred and disgust before thy virginal, virginal purity. But I have heard that God, who was born of thee, because became man on purpose to call sinners to repentance. Then help me, for I have no other help. Order the entrance of the church to be open to me. Allow me to see the venerable tree on which he who was born of thee suffered in the flesh, and on which he shed his holy blood for the redemption of sinners and for me. Unworthy as I am, be my faithful witness before thy son that I will never again defile my body by the impurity of fornication. But as soon as I have seen the tree of the cross, I will renounce the world and its temptations and will go wherever thou wilt lead me. Thus I spoke, and as if acquiring some hope in firm faith and feeling some confidence in the mercy of the Mother of God, I left the place where I stood praying, and I went again and mingled with the crowd that was pushing its way into the temple. And now, no one seemed to thwart me, no one hindered my entering the church. I was possessed with trembling and was almost in delirium, having got as far as the doors which I could not reach before as if the same force which had hindered me cleared the way for me. I now entered without difficulty and found myself within the holy place. And so it was, I saw the life-giving cross. I saw too the mysteries of God and how the Lord accepts repentance. Throwing myself on the ground, I worshipped that holy earth and kissed it with 
trembling. Then I came out of the church and went to her who had promised to be my security to the place where I had sealed my God. And bending my knees before the Virgin Mother of God, I addressed to her such words as these. O loving lady, thou hast shown me thy great love for all men. Glory to God, who receives the repentance of sinners through thee. What more can I recollect or say? I am so simple. It is time for me, O lady, to fulfill my vow according to thy witness. Now lead me by thy hand along the path of repentance. And at these words I heard a voice from on high. If you cross the Jordan, you will find glorious rest. Hearing this voice and having faith that it was for me, I cried to the Mother of God, O lady, lady, do not forsake me. With these words, I left the porch of the church and set off on my journey. As I was leaving the church, a stranger glanced at me and gave me three coins, saying, Sister, take these. And taking the money, I brought three loaves and took them with me on my journey as a blessed gift. I asked the person who sold the bread, which is the way to the Jordan? I was directed to the city gate, which led that way. Running long, I passed the gates, and still weeping, went on my journey. Those I met, I asked the way. And after walking for the rest of that day, I think it was nine o'clock when I saw the cross, I at length reached at some of the church of St. John the Baptist, which stood on the banks of the Jordan. After praying in the temple, I went down to the Jordan, and rinsed my face and hands in its holy waters. I partook of the holy and life-giving mysteries in the church of the front and ate half of one of my loaves. Then after drinking some water from the Jordan, I lay down and passed the night on the ground. In the morning, I found a small boat and crossed to the opposite bank. I then prayed to our Lord to lead me Whither, he would, whither she would. Then I found myself in this desert, and since then, up to this very day, I am estranged from all, keeping away from people and running away from everyone. And I live here clinging to my God, who saves all who turn to Him from faint heartedness and sorrows. Those of us asked her, How many years have gone by since you began to live in, the, in this desert? She replied, Forty-seven years have already gone by, I think, since I left the holy city. Zosimus asked, But what food do you find? The woman said, I have two and a half loaves. When I crossed the Jordan, soon they dried up and became hard as a rock. Eating a little, I gradually finished them after a few years. Zosimus asked, Can it be that without getting ill, you have lived so many years thus? without suffering in any way from such a complete change? The woman answered, You remind me, Zosimus, of what I dare not speak of. For when I recall all the dangers which I overcame, and all the violent thoughts which, confu which confused me, I am again afraid that they will take possession of me. Zosimus said, Do not hide from me anything. Speak to me without concealing anything. And she said unto him, Believe me, Abba, seventeen years I passed in this desert, fighting wild beasts, mad desires and passions. When I was about to partake of food, I used to begin to regret the meat and fish of which I had so much in Egypt. I regretted also not having wine which I loved so much, for I drank a lot of wine when I lived in the world, while here I had not I had not even water. I used to burn and succumb to thirst. The mad desire for profligate songs also entered me and confused me greatly, edging me on to sing satanic songs which I had learned once. But when such desires entered me, I struck myself on the breast and reminded myself of the vow which I had made. While going into the desert, in my thoughts I returned to the icon of the Mother of God, which had 
receive me. And to her I cried in prayer. I implored her to chase away the thoughts to which my miserable soul was succumbing. And after weeping for long and beating my breast, I used to see light at last, which seemed to shine on me from everywhere. And after the violent storm, lasting calm descended. And how can I tell you about the thoughts which urged me on to fornication? How can I express them to you all? A fire was kindled in my miserable heart, which seemed to burn me up completely and to awaken in me a thirst for embraces. As soon as this craving came to me, I flung myself on the earth and watered it with many tears, as if I saw before me my witness, who had appeared to me in my disobedience, and who seemed to threaten punishment for the crime. And I did not rise from the ground. Sometimes I lay thus prostrate for a day and a night, until a calm and sweet light descended and enlightened me and chased away the thoughts that possessed me. But always I turned the eyes of my mind to my protectress, asking her to extend help to one who was sinking fast in the ways of the desert. And I always had her as my helper and the acceptor of my repentance. And thus I lived for 17 years amid constant dangers. And since then, even, to, even till now, the mother of God helps me in everything and leads me as it were by the hand. Zosimus asked, Can it be that you did not need food and clothing? She answered, After finishing the loaves I had of which I spoke for seventeen years, I have fed on herbs and all that can be found in the desert. The clothes I had when I crossed the Jordan became torn and worn out. I suffered greatly from the cold and greatly from the extreme heat. At times the sun burned me up, and at other times I shivered from the frost, and frequently falling to the ground I lay without breath and without motion. I struggled with many afflictions and with terrible temptations, but from that time till now, the power of God in numerous ways has guarded my sinful soul and my humble heart. When I only reflect on the evils from which our Lord has delivered me, I have imperishable food for hope, salvation. I am fed and clothed by the all-powerful word of God, the Lord of all. For it is not by bread alone that man lives, and those who have stripped off the rags of sin have no refuge, hiding themselves in the clefts of the rocks. Hearing that she cited words scripture from Moses and Job, those who must ask her, and so you have read the Psalms and other books. She smiled at this and said unto the elder, Believe me, I have not seen a human face ever since I crossed the Jordan, except yours today. I have not seen a beast or a living being ever since I came into the desert. I have never learned from books. I have never even heard anyone who said and read from them. But the word of God, which is alive and active by itself, teaches a man knowledge. And so, this is the end of my tale. But as I asked you in the beginning, so even now I implore you for the sake of the incarnate word of God to pray to the Lord for me who am such a sinner. Thus concluding her tale, she bowed down before him, and with tears, the elder exclaimed, Blessed is God who creates the great and the wondrous, the glorious and marvelous above heaven. Blessed is God who has shown me how he rewards those who fear him. Truly, O Lord, thou didst not forsake those who seek thee. And the woman, not allowing the elder to bow down before her, said, I beg you, Holy Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, Tell no one what you have heard until God delivers me of this earth. And now, depart in peace, and again, next year you shall see me, and I you, if God will preserve us in his great mercy. 
But for God's sake, do as I ask you. Next year during Lent, do not cross the Jordan, as is your custom in the monastery. Zosimus was amazed to hear that she knew the rules of the monastery and could only say, Glory to God who bestows great gifts on those who love him. She continued, Remain, Abba, in the monastery, and even if you wish to depart, you will not be able to do so. And at sunset of the holy day of the Last Supper, put some of the life-giving body and blood of Christ into a holy vessel worthy to hold such mysteries for me and bring it. And wait for me on the banks of the Jordan, adjoining the inhabited parts of the land, so that I can come and partake of the life-giving gifts. For since the time I communicated from the temple of the forerunner, before crossing the Jordan, even to this day, I have not approached the holy mysteries. And I thirst for them with irrepressible love and longing. And therefore I ask and implore you to grant me my wish. Bring me the life giving mysteries at the very hour when our Lord made his disciples partake of his divine suppers. Tell John, the abbot of the monastery where you live, look to yourself and to your brothers, for there is much that needs correction. Only do not say this now, but when God guides you, pray for me. With these words she vanished from the depths of the desert, and Zosimus, falling down on his knees and bowing down to the ground on which she had stood, sent up glory and thanks unto God. And after wandering through the desert, he returned to the monastery on the day all the brothers returned. For the whole year he kept silent, not daring to tell anyone of what he had seen. But in his soul, he prayed to God to give him another chance of seeing the ascetic's dear face. And when at length the first Sunday of the great fast came, all went out into the desert with the customary prayers and the singing of psalms. Only Zosimus was held back by illness. He lay in a fever. And then he remembered what the saint had said to him. And even if you wish to depart, you will not be able to do so. Many, many days passed, and at last, recovering from his illness, he remained in the monastery. And when again the monks returned on the day of the last supper dawn, he did as he had been ordered. And placing some of the most pure body and blood into a small chalice, and putting some figs and dates and lentils soaked in water into a small basket, he departed for the desert and reached the banks of the Jordan and sat down to wait for the saint. He waited for a long while and then began to doubt. Then raising his eyes to heaven, he began to pray, Grant me, O Lord, to behold that which thou hast allowed me to behold once. Do not let me depart in vain, bearing the burden of my sins. And then another thought struck him. And what if she does not come? There is no boat. How will she cross the Jordan to come to me, who am so unworthy? And as he was pondering thus, he saw a holy woman appear and stand on the other side of the Jordan River. Those ones got up rejoicing and glorified and thanking God. And again the thought came to him that she could not cross the Jordan. Then he saw that she made the sign of the cross over the waters of the Jordan, and the night was a moonlit one, as he related afterwards. And then she at once stepped onto the waters and began moving across the surface towards him. And when he wanted to prostrate himself, she cried to him, while still walking on the water. What are you doing, Abba? You are a priest and carrying the divine gifts. He obeyed her, and on reaching the shore, she said to the elder, Bless Father, bless you. He answered her trembling, for his state of confusion had overcome him at the sight of the miracle. Truly God did not lie when he promised that when we purify ourselves, we shall be like him. Glory to thee, Christ our God, who has shown 
me who this isolated, how far away I stand from perfection. Here the woman asked him to say the creed, and our father, he began. She finished the prayer, and according to the custom of that time, gave him the kiss of peace on the lips. Having partake of the holy mysteries, she raised her hands to heaven, and sighed with tears in her eyes, exclaiming, Now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, O Lord, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Then she said to the elder, Forgive me, Abba, for asking thee, but fulfill another wish of mine. Go now to the monastery, and let God's grace guard thee. And next year, come again to the same place where I first met thee. Come, for God's sake, who you shall again see, for such is the will of God. He said to her, From this day on, I would like to follow you and always see your holy face. But now fulfill this one and only wish of the old man, and take a little of the food I have brought for you. And he showed her the basket, while she just touched, touched the lentils with the tip of her fingers, and taking three grains, that the Holy Spirit guards the substance of the soul unpolluted. Then she said, Pray, for God's sake, pray for me, and remember me, a miserable wretch. Touching the saint's feet and asking for her prayers for the church, the kingdom, and himself, he let her depart with tears. While she went outside and sorrowful, for he could not hope to vanquish the invincible. Meanwhile, she again made the sign of the cross over the Jordan and stepped onto the waters and crossed over as before. And the elder returned, filled with joy and terror, accusing himself of not having, of having asked the saint her name. But he decided to do so next year. And when another year had passed, he again went into the desert. He reached the same spot but could not see but could see no sign of anyone. So raising his eyes to heaven, as before, he prayed, Show me, O Lord, thy pure treasure, which thou hast concealed in the desert. Show me, I pray thee, thine angel in the flesh, of which the world is not worthy. Then on the opposite bank of the river, her face turned towards the rising sun. He saw the saint lying dead. Her hands were crossed according to the custom and her face was turned to the east. Running up, he shed tears over the saint's feet and kissed them, not daring to touch anything else. For a long time he wept, then reciting the appointed songs, he said the burial prayers and thought to himself, must I bury the body of a saint, or will, I, or will this be contrary to her wishes? And when he and then he saw words traced on the ground by her head, Abba Zosimus, bury on this spot the body of humble Mary, return to dust that which is dust, and pray to the Lord for me who departed in the month of Fermotine of Egypt, called April by the Romans, on the first day, on the very night of our Lord's Passion, after having partaken of the divine mysteries. Reading this, the elder was glad to know the saint's name. He understood too that as soon as she had partaken of the divine mysteries on the shore of the Jordan, she was at once transported to the place where she died. The distance which Zosimus had taken 20 days to cover, Mary had evidently traversed in an hour and had at once surrendered her soul to God. Then Zosimus thought, it is time to do as she wished, but how am I to dig a grave with nothing in my hands? And then he saw nearby a small, a small piece of wood left by some traveler in the desert. Picking it up, he began to dig the ground, but the earth was hard and dry and did not yield to the efforts of the elder. He grew tired and covered with sweat. He saw it from the depths of his soul, and lifting up his eye, he saw a big lion standing close to the saint's body and licking her feet. 
At the sight of the lion, he trembled with fear, especially when he called to mind Herod's words that she had never seen wild beasts in the desert, but guarding himself. And with the sign of the cross, the thought came to him that the power of the one lying there would protect him and keep him unharmed. Meanwhile, the lion drew nearer to him, expressing affection by every movement. Zosima said to the lion, the great one ordered that her body was to be buried, but I am old and am not the strength to dig the grave, for I have, not, for I have no spade, and it would take too long to go and get one. So can you carry out the work with your claws? Then we can commit to the earth the mortal temple of the saint. While he was still speaking, the lion with his front paws began to dig a hole deep enough to bury the body. Again, the elder washed the feet of the saint with his tears and calling on her to pray for all, covering the body with earth in the presence of the lion. It was as it had been, naked and uncovered by anything, but the tattering cloak which had been given to her by Zosim and with which Mary, turning away, had managed to cover part of her body. Then both departed. The lion went off into the depths of the desert like a lamb. While Zosimus returned to the monastery glorified and blessing Christ our Lord. And on reaching the mountain, he told all the brothers about everything. And all marveled on hearing of God's miracles. And with fear and love, they kept the memory of the saint. Abbot John, as St. Mary had previously told of Azosimus, found a number of things wrong in the monastery and got rid of them with God's help. And St. Zosimus died in the same monastery, almost attaining to the age of a hundred, and passed to eternal life. The monks kept the story without writing it down and passed it on by word of mouth one another. But I, as St. Sophronius, as soon as I heard it, wrote it down. Perhaps someone else, better informed, hath already written the life of the saint. But as far as I could, I have recorded everything, putting truth above all else. May God, who works amazing miracles and generously bestows gifts on those who turn to him in faith, reward those who seek life for themselves in this story, we hear, read, and are zealous to write it. And may he grant them the lot of the Blessed Mary, together with all who at different times have pleased God by their pious thoughts and hearts. And let us also give glory to God, the eternal King, that he grant us to his mercy in the day of judgment for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom belongs all glory, honor, dominion, Adoration with the eternal Father and the most holy and not the Spirit, always, now and always, and throughout all ages. Amen.
the brothers of Joseph of old, who sold the truth of purity and chastity. And his righteous and gentle soul was bound by his kinsmen as, and he was sold into slavery as a foretelling of the Lord. But thou, o my soul, hast sold thyself entirely to thy sin. And mercy on me, O God, and mercy on me. O my miserable and wretched soul, imitate the righteous and chest mind of Joseph, and do not defile thyself by counting, continuing to endow thy wanton and irrational desires. And mercy on me, O God. and with understanding. 
but thou my soul art more gravely ill than he, or worse than any acts are that are which to hold thy will. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David once joined sin to sin when he mixed adultery with murder, yet then he showed at once that hopeful repentance. But thou, my soul, hast thou worse things than he, yet thou hast not repented before God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David once composed, saying, setting forth as in an icon, all the evils he had done, and he condemns them, cry, have mercy on me, for against me only have I seen, O God of all, cleanse me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When the ark of the covenant was being carried in a cart, and one of the oxen stumbled, Asa only touched it, and yet he experiences the wrath of God. Flee from his presumption, my soul, and respect with reverence the things of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast heard of Absalom and how he rebuilt against nature. Thou knowest of his weak deeds and how he defied his father very bad. Yet thou hast followed him in his passionate and sensual desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thy thee, thy thee, hast thou enslaved to thy body, O my soul, for thou hast found in the enemy another, a hateful act, and hast become an accomplice to his designs. But Christ himself has shattered his bones so that thou mayest be saved. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Solomon be, Solomon the wonderful was full of grace and wisdom, yet he committed evil in the sight of heaven and turned away from God, and thou, my wretched soul, so have followed him by thine accursed life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Carried away by his sensual virgins, he defiled himself. Alas, so long the lover of wisdom became a lover of harlots and estranged himself from God. And thou, my soul, have imitated him through thy shameful desire. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast taken the example, my soul, of Rehoboam, who would not listen to his father's counselors, and of Jeroboam, 
divide but we are like the widow of Zeraka and provide for the prophet so have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Of thy love we will have thou deliberately amassed the seeds of Manasseh by setting up the virtues as idols and multiplying ab ab abominations. But fervently and let his repentance now and be truly sorry for thy sin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I fall down for thee, and as if I offer thee my word, I have seen like the harlot and transgressed as no one else on earth. But take pity on me, thy great creator, O Master. And for the event to be. And mercy on me, O God, and mercy on me. I have wounded thy image and have broken thy commandments. All my being is destroyed, and my land is done out of it because of all my sins. But do thou as David see, take pity on me, O Savior, and restore me to thy joy. And mercy on me, O God.
dash of his hand, he brought back the departed soul of Darius' daughter. Of all the Savior. Have mercy on me, Lord. 
thy praises, O venerable Mother Mary, that we may be set free from their sufferings and afflictions, that assail us from every side, and that being delivered from misfortunes, we may unceasingly magnify the Lord who has glorified thee.
Грешница Мария, прежде чем уйти в пустыню, как мы это услышали в Бутия, пришла в Москве Святого Иоанна и не причастила. Не причастила. Sorry, search is not, is not good. So I will sometime 